What's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Matt. Currently we're loaded up in my pickup truck. We just picked up the skid loader from a little uh, grading job I was doing. Anyways, cruising through this neighborhood here, gonna get out on the road. And uh, we're gonna go pick up some more treasures and fix the mess I made getting that wheel loader out of its grave. You guys remember this spot I'm sure most of you do this is where that big orange wheel loader that i bought was parked for 20 years supposedly and uh it was pretty wet when i pulled it out of here and then the tire popped off the rim when i was backing it out so it just pretty much gutted the whole area it's pretty wet in here i think there's like a spring feeds in or something but uh pretty much yeah it, it needs uh, leveled back out. I, she said not to worry about it, but I, I felt bad. I don't want to leave it like this, first of all. Second of all, second of all, I needed a machine here to load up this stuff. So I bought this off of her as well, as well as this little 5x8 trailer and these couple attachments. This looks like a 42-inch rotor tiller that goes on that little tractor and this looks like maybe a 48 inch snowblower so that's pretty cool so I'm gonna guess that this tractor has been sitting approximately 10 years because that's when uh, the lady I bought it off of that's when her husband passed away and she said it's been sitting for quite a while so it's got this log splitter on the three-point attachment that's pretty nice yep it's a Mitsubishi MT 372 it's got a two-cylinder diesel engine so that's pretty neat should be a good little tractor if i can get it running I got the tractor, the two attachments, well three attachments, the log splitter, the snow blower, the tiller, the five by eight trailer, which uh, you know is pretty rough, but supposedly has a title, and the cherry picker for $400, because I know everybody's gonna ask the price, and uh, yeah, 400 bucks.
Now, as you guys should have seen there at the beginning of the video, I actually picked this thing up quite a while back. I actually got this from the same place that I got the big orange crush uh, Clark Michigan wheel loader. That wheel loader has since gone, but this thing remains. There was a log splitter on the back here. It's on loan to a buddy of mine. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get this thing fired up today. I don't really know anything about these Mitsubishi garden tractors. I know it looks like it's a pretty well-equipped little tractor. It's kind of like a uh, early type of Kubota, pretty much, is what would have been the competition for it. It's got a nice three-point hitch on the back here with a 540 PTO. Uh, what else do we have here? I'm not sure what that lever even does. We've got a three-speed main gearbox here. And then it looks like we've got a three-speed transfer case kind of thing, like a three ranges, I think. Could be wrong on that. Like I said, I don't know anything about these Mitsubishi tractors. We're missing a key, so that's a bummer. I don't see any obvious signs that this thing has been severely tampered with or anything. What I'm hoping is that they were using it and it just got parked one year and they never used it again in the spring and it sat. What I'm worried about, the only thing that's really concerning me looking at this thing, is we've got some mouse house here, I think, going into the, uh, the exhaust manifold. I don't know if you guys can see in there. There's supposed to be a big muffler on the side of this thing and it's not there anymore. Also, we have a fuel line just hanging down here off the side of the injection pump. So I'm not sure what that says about it. I guess we're gonna go ahead and yank the hood off of here first thing and have a little look-see, start going through everything. Hopefully the engine isn't full of water or worse yet, full of mouse house on top of the pistons. That would be a very bad day. It might kind of look like I put this tractor in kind of a weird place here, but you know why I put it here? <laughs> we're working on concrete in a very muddy day and that is like an oasis in a desert. <laughs> I think I've said it before on the channel here. Everybody says that there's four seasons in the year, but when you live in Pennsylvania, there's actually five. You got spring, you got summer, you've got fall, and then you got mud season and then winter. So we're actually in mud season right now. It's a delight. Let's take a peek under a dress here and see what we got. Woo, mouse house. Look at this big thing over here. That's a three-story mouse dominium right there. That was uh, currently inhabited, I do believe, because when we picked up the tractor and started to drag it over here, I saw a couple of mice jump out of it, so that doesn't surprise me. I hate these little buggers. They're always making homes where I don't want them. Anybody home? Hope not. Ugh. Unearthing the battery here. The battery should give us an approximate date. Hopefully there's a date code on here and we can have at least a general idea of the last time this thing ran. I haven't even located a dipstick yet on this thing. A dipstick would be helpful because I could pull it and see if we have any water in the oil. Oh, here we go. Found an oil plug. Kind of hidden down in here. This is at least a fill plug. I don't know if it has a dipstick on it or not. Ooh, that's good news. The oil is very black, which is not the good news, but the good news is I don't see any water on the dipstick. But it does also look like it's extremely over full. That could be from me pulling it around or the water could be sitting at the bottom and uh, floating the oil up. So we're not out of the woods yet, but it's not bad news. Gonna pull this cute little air filter over here and see what kind of rodent infestation we do or do not have there. What, do you, what are you guys thinking? Place your bets now. Is there gonna be a mouse house in here? Huh. Well, if you had mouse house, you'd be a losing man. I'm surprised because the uh, pre-cleaner on here is supposed to have like a wire mesh to keep any rodents from getting down inside of the the housing and the wire mesh is missing so that's prime real estate for a mouse maybe this air filter housing is a little too small for them but my goodness look at how <laughs> nasty and black that air filter is that's probably the the blackest one i've ever seen 
I don't know if that's from moisture lingering in there or dirt or what. If this thing runs, we're gonna have to replace that. Well, we made it to second base with this old girl. Let's pop the radiator cap off and see what that has for us. Uh, well, it's wet, but it's not, uh, there's no antifreeze that I can see. Let me squeeze the bottom hose here. Okay, we have water. I can see it poking up through the, uh, the tubes there. It's just barely, barely down below the tubes. So that's actually a good sign. So we've already seen on the other side there that the fuel line from the tank to the injection pump is disconnected. But we'll have a gander in the tank just for giggles and see what we're working with in there. Oh, wow. I don't know if you guys can see. Remarkably clean looking in there. Like, remarkably clean looking. Oh, yep. She's varnished up pretty good, though. That is some old diesel. <laughs> Smells like a can of Minwax. So... Definitely been sitting for quite a while, but not a rusted out tank with a bunch of water in it. So that's uh, that's another good sign. I think we're we're playing a pretty good hand here so far. Normally, I would advocate at this point to go ahead and throw a wrench or a socket onto the crankshaft, the engine, and try to turn it over with a bar. But in this case, there's no good place to do that. We have a PTO up front here, which is on a magnetic clutch, so you can't really grip that and spin it. There's kind of really covers and stuff in the way you can't get a bite on anything on the front of the engine. On the back of the engine, of course, it's tied directly into the transmission, so we can't do anything there. So I think our only hope here, you know, if we really had to, we could pull the starter while we're going down that rabbit hole. We could pull the starter and do it with a bar, but rather than do all that work, I'm just going to go ahead and throw my jump pack on there and see if this thing's going to crank over. I got a light. We're going to go ahead and have a better peek inside of this exhaust. Oh... That does not look good. I don't know if you guys can see it. I can see a horde of small nuts up in there. Oh, I really hope that they weren't able to get into the cylinders. This side doesn't look bad. Man, that's a real bummer. Best case scenario is that they weren't able to get it down past the valve and they just stored some food in there rather than living in there and peeing down in the cylinder because the mouse urine is actually what does the damage. Little nuts and stuff like that really won't hurt anything. So best case scenario, they just stored their food in there and as soon as we crank it over, it's going to blow all that out. All right, well, we got some juice connected to it there. Nothing's arcing out or on fire yet, so that's a good sign. Uh, we don't have a key, so I guess I'm gonna go have to uh, jump the starter contacts over here and see if anything happens. All right, you guys ready? Here goes nothing. Contact. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's good news. She's cranking over. The uh, the Bendix gear on the end of the starter was hanging up there at first, so it was just spinning the starter, not engaging the engine. But uh, yeah, she's spinning over. Kind of slow though. Well, I don't know. It's not the best sounding crank I've ever heard, but. Not the worst either. Well, I guess we're ready to try and get some fuel to this thing. Oddly enough, I don't have to clean a fuel tank or anything. It all looks pretty darn good. This might end up being an easy one. So obviously to get some fuel back to the injection pump, we're gonna need to reconnect our fuel line here. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. The filter's pretty crusty and I'm gonna change that out. I don't trust it, but to connect this to the tank, the original little stubby fuel line there was just, look at that, disintegrating. It's gone. So. Got a new piece of rubber hose here. Just gonna jam that on there with a couple clamps and then uh, swap out this nasty looking fuel filter. All right. Well, I was able to scare up another fuel filter around here. I think it's actually the wrong size for this fuel line, but I think we're gonna try to make it work. Or, well, I don't think I know we're gonna try to make it work. <laughs> yep. We got her. 
No clamps required. We've got our fuel valve turned on. We should be able to just crack this guy. Ooh, crack. Ooh. No, we're not just going to be able to crack. <laughs> I got to get a wrench. There we go. So, crack this thing open. Fuel should start dribbling out of here. Mm. There we go. So now we got fuel up to our pump. Next thing we're going to do, crack the injector lines open right up at the injectors and crank this thing open until we get fuel coming out there. To do that, we're going to set our throttle wide open. We'll move around the other side and crack the injectors. You got to watch breaking these injector lines loose. Sometimes the nut will actually kind of rust itself to the line. And then when you go to start twisting it, you actually twist the line and you can ruin your line. The other thing is after you back off the nut a couple turns, always take the line and pull it back a little bit to unseat it and make sure you don't still have that line wedged in there, making a seal. Yeah. All right, this guy's only a two cylinder, so that should be all we have to do. We'll go ahead and crank this thing over now until we see fuel start spurting out of there. You guys ready? Contact. I'd say that's enough. We got some fuel coming up there. All right, you guys ready? Well, I'm excited. No matter how big or small the piece of equipment is that I'm reviving, man, I'm just as excited every time. Um, I've been seeing this thing over there staring at me through the tree line for, I think, two years now. I'll have to go back and look. I've got a can of ether here, but I'm gonna refrain from using it unless we, uh, we don't get any jam out of this thing. Our throttle's set to wide open. The tractor is in neutral. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. You guys ready? Contact. Come on. A lot of times what will happen too is uh, for whatever reason, whether it's the old fuel still in the injectors or maybe the tips kind of get glossed over with some, some really gelled up uh, old diesel or whatever it is. Oh, we have glow plugs on here too. That would help. How do we jump for the glow plugs? I just noticed we have glow plugs. Well, without a key, I can't run them. Anyways, we'll go ahead and just give it a teeny little whiff of ether and see if it wants to start that way. Well, started to see a little bit of smoke. So that's an improvement. These little teeny engines, it seems like they're pretty darn easy to ether lock. So you gotta be real sparing with the uh, starting fluid there. Only spray it in there when it's turning over. I'm gonna give this starter a break and we'll give it another shot. All right, you guys ready? Contact. It was close there, it wanted to go. Come on, starter. Ah, we got one little pop out of it there, I think. You guys ready? Contact. Hmm. 
that's weird. Spraying ether directly into the intake there. Still not getting any uh, pops or bangs or anything. I'm kind of wondering if perhaps we have an exhaust valve or two stuck and we're not getting the compression that we need for combustion. Easy way to tell, we're gonna be able to pop this valve cover off of here. It looks like there's six bolts. Pop the valve cover off and we'll have a good look at that valve train. I put things together in my mind here. So my train of thought at the moment is the rear cylinder was packed full of nuts. So there's a chance that that exhaust valve is stuck. The front one seemed to be like we were getting some smoke out of it, but not the back one. So another reason I'm thinking rear exhaust valve may be stuck. And we seem like we got one puff out of the front one, like it popped one time on fuel and then uh, not again. So crack that again, we got some air out of it. So it leads me to think again, front one may go. And a lot of times something like this, you get one cylinder to come alive or in a bigger engine, a couple cylinders, it'll kind of bring the other ones alive with it as it takes off and gets running. Little two cylinder engine, pretty much everything's gotta be right to get this thing going. So we're gonna give it one more shot here, see if it wants to go now. If not, we're going to have to pull that valve cover off. Contact. Yep, just for giggles, I just fogged the intake there. I just completely filled it full of starting fluid and we're not getting any increased sign of life. It just pushed raw ether right back out the exhaust side. So I'm darn sure now that we have an exhaust valve hanging open. <sighs> All right, we're back the next day with some good daylight here. Let's pop this valve cover off and see what the story is under there. I have a feeling we have at least one, if not multiple stuck valves. That is one heck of a gasket. Oh yeah. All right, so what we're looking at here are our valve springs. And what I expected to see was multiple of these stuck down lower. But since they're all at a uniform height right now and don't appear to be massively out of whack or anything, I don't, I don't know that we do have a valve spring hung up. Maybe we're just dealing with low compression and uh, you know the engine not spinning over fast enough. Diesels need a lot of compression and ideally a fast cranking speed to, uh, to pop off, especially when they're really cold like this. So even though nothing's jumping out at me, we're gonna go ahead and crank it over and watch these valves and make sure that they're all pushing and lifting back up like they're supposed to. All right, just keep an eye on these springs here and we'll see what the story is. You guys ready? Contact. I tell you what, that was strange. All this thing did was set overnight and almost acted like it was gonna pop off right there. Uh, it almost started, I think. That doesn't make any sense. Contact. Yeah, I can't, uh... <laughs> you guys hear the oil squeezing out down in there in the oil passages? I don't see any issues up here. These valves appear to be doing their thing just fine. All we probably managed to do is make a valve cover leak now in the future. I think I'm gonna bolt that back on because uh, we don't need to be messing in here. I could check the valve lash, but I don't know what it's supposed to be and yeah, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that back on there. It's easy enough to take back off if uh, we need to adjust the valves in the future. So the only two causes that we, so the only two reasons this thing might not be starting now are A, a fuel delivery issue, or B, a low compression issue. And at this point, I'm kind of leaning towards low compression um, 
you know, when things like this sit for a long time, the piston rings will kind of get stuck wherever they were. And when the piston moves up and down in the cylinder, the rings are frozen into the piston skirt or into the piston groove rather. And the piston rings don't do their job by expanding and uh, working and keeping a tight seal to the cylinder walls. So you'll end up with a lower compression. It can be hard to get these old things going because of that reason. can pull the intake off here and squirt a little bit of heavier oil down in the cylinders and that'll often jump up the compression ratio a bit and uh, once it's run in the rings like I said they'll start to seat again and do their job better in the future usually you know if you check the compression on an old engine that hasn't run in forever you check it before it's run and you check it after you run it for a few hours and the compression jumps way up on them Well, in your basic order of operations for an engine, you have suck, bang, and blow. And uh, that center hole there, that's the suck. So we're gonna spray some heavier oil in there and hopefully crank it over some. And that should draw that oil in, put it down in around the pistons and see what we can do. I gotta watch, I don't get too much in here. There's a chance I could, uh, Basically, hydro lock the engine, putting that much oil in here. Contact. Oh yeah, that, that jumped up the compression for sure. Did you guys just hear the difference there? I hope you did. We only had like compression on one cylinder there for a second. That second one just chimed in. All right, so I was sitting here scratching my head thinking about how I could get this thing to turn over faster. So I hooked the jump box directly to the starter now, and I think we might be onto something here. It seems like it's spinning faster. You guys ready? Contact. Uh-huh. that starter a break we had a couple good knocks there though like it was popping off on both cylinders there but i think only on ether it's like it's still not getting fuel for whatever reason so maybe the injectors could be completely clogged up or let's try this again shall we contact come on baby So close. 
and another desperate attempt here. I'm going to directly put voltage to these uh, glow plugs just for a quick couple seconds here. See if that turns anything on. Definitely getting warm in there. I can hear them making some noises through the intake. Let's give that a go. Contact. It's like it's just not getting quite enough to go on its own. It's, it's so close. I'm gonna hit the glow plugs again, because that did something. One, two, three, four, five. I don't wanna cook them too long, because I don't know what they're actually rated for. Going a little overkill on the ether again. Ah. It is so close to firing up. I think the front cylinder's carrying it. I still don't think we're getting fuel atomizing properly in this rear cylinder because I'm getting black smoke out of this one and just a little bit of white smoke out of this one. All right, so the people that tell me all the time that I shouldn't use ether, a lot of them tell me to use different things, uh, one of them being WD-40. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I've actually never tried to use WD-40, but uh, I don't see how it could hurt. The old WD doesn't seem to do anything. I'm gonna glow plug it again. Give it an eight count this time. Three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, sure, ten. Why not? In contact. Oh, come on, baby! Come on! Oh, what the heck? Wow, those glow plugs make a big difference. We're gonna do another 10 count on those because we were close. That was, that was really cool. Nine, 10. Contact. Yes! Come on, baby, come on, you got it. My goodness, that was a fight and a half. Good lord. That was a battle. <laughs> Clamoring away pretty good now.
think we had to be really fighting the low compression and uh, not turning over fast enough. And those glow plugs made an incredible difference. So I know the Kubota engines are like that too. If you don't have glow plugs for a Kubota, you can pretty much forget it, especially on a chilly day. And like anything below 70 degrees, you have to have glow plugs for. <laughs> yeah! Oh, I'm excited now. Alrighty. <laughs> so, good news, bad news. Good news is it runs! Ah! <laughs> that was a rewarding one for sure. That was, uh, that was more struggle than it should have been. The bad news is I just found another reason I think that this thing was turning over pretty slow on us. If you guys could hear that, it had the Diesel Creek belt squeal going on there. And that is because the alternator is locked up on it. I couldn't tell that immediately because the, uh, the shielding here, you really can't see the pulley down there at all. I had to go around to the other side and really take a hard look to be able to see that it wasn't turning. So that was uh, part of the reason it probably wasn't turning over very fast for us. Also the wiring here for the alternator, and this may be why they parked it, the wiring, actually, yeah, I'm starting to see some signs now that I'm looking closer. These wires were all pulled off of it, and there's a broken contact on the back of that alternator. Also, this nut down here that holds it on there, also removed. So somebody may have parked this tractor because of a bad alternator, and it's just been sitting and sitting. So let's uh, see about getting that thing off there and freed up. And now that this thing's running, we need to do an oil change. Kind of funny, we just got this thing fired up and I've been jumping the solenoid on the starter the whole time to get it to crank since we don't have a key. And uh, my wife shows up with the packages from the PO box. And one of you kind people out there sent me a uh, remote starter switch. So I, I did in fact know about these for a long time and uh, I've just never bought one, but somebody out there thought I needed one. So really appreciate that. I, I never ask for anything like that. I mean, I, a lot of you guys go above and beyond and send me stuff and it's all really appreciated. And uh, I, I really try to get thank you letters out to everybody, but uh, yeah, so greatly appreciated that. All right, let's get this old oil out of here, huh? Lord knows how long it's been in there. Oh. Oh man, every drain plug I go to take out lately, just rock solid in there. I do not believe this. It's hot now, who'd have thunk it? go. Yeah, I tell you what, that oil, it's black, but it really doesn't look bad. I don't see any water or uh, contaminants in it. <laughs> there's no, there's no shiny streakage, so that's, that's a good sign. Oh. There we go. Oh, I think that's as good as we're gonna get. All right, time for some fresh oil. Time and time again, you guys have seen me reach for uh, nothing but Shell Rotella using the T5 as of late because I really feel like you're getting the best of both worlds as far as the additive packages versus the conventional oil. This is a, a semi-synthetic blend and uh, yeah, you're supposed to be able to get longer intervals between oil changes and uh, 
it's just a whole different set of additives they put in there that uh, all the engines seem to really like. Everything I got that's diesel runs on Rotella. I like it. Right on the money now. Moving on to this alternator over here. We're going to go ahead and get the wires off first. And then I have to take the mounting bolts off. And... Then we can finally get this stupid guard off of here. Woo! Let's disconnect the power from that. <laughs> that was dumb. Wasn't thinking about that. That's hot coming directly from the battery. And we're back feeding the battery with the jumper pack. Can't believe this. Ugh, there we go. Good gravy that thing was on there. Why do I feel like that bolt's just snapping off in there? Yikes. Well, after 15 minutes of uh, heating and a beating here, trying to get this bottom alternator bolt out, <laughs> I happened to grab the fan here, and we had knocked this alternator loose. Uh, it was still kind of sticky when it first come loose there, but I've been spinning it around here back and forth a little bit, and it's actually feels pretty good. Like a lot better than you would think an alternator that's just been freed up would feel. Let's uh, just go ahead and throw it back together and see what happens. Nice new air filter here. I think that's a pretty good step up over this guy. Man, look how dark the pleats are in that thing. All right, so I'm just about certain that the longer we run this thing, the better it's gonna run. I think those injectors in there, like I said, were pretty gummed up. Uh, I use Marvel Magic Mystery Oil a lot for this. I use automatic transmission fluid a lot for this. I use Lucas injector cleaner. Tons of stuff works. Um, we're gonna give Marvel a shot today. And yeah, let's see what this does for us. Let's see if we can't fire this thing up and then we're gonna go ahead and see if this thing's actually gonna move all this work just to see if the thing will actually even move because if it doesn't, what are we doing here? All right, we got fresh Rotella in the oil. All right, we got the engine full of fresh Rotella. We got some uh, injector cleaner in the fuel tank. We got a fresh air filter, oil filter. Our alternator will actually turn now. Got the lone wolf trigger here. Let's see if we can't get this thing to fire up again. And if we can, let's see if it's gonna drive. All right, now let's try. Contact. Oh yeah, baby. Man. That engine loves its glow plugs. That's incredible how much difference that makes, actually. This guy over here. Oh, yep, there we go. That's our three-point arms. It seems to be working just right. Beautiful. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I like this little thing already. All right, let's see if I can figure this thing out here. That's first gear. <laughs> it moves. <laughs> First, there's second. Let's see if the brakes work, I guess. Oh, the brakes even work. This thing's too nice for me. Let's see if third goes. Oh, yeah. It doesn't even stall at idle in third gear. I still don't know what this switch over here does, unless it's a high low. Oh, that's a low range. Look at that. That's first gear low range. Oh, we got a creeper gear. That's going to be good for running the snow blower and that tiller that we have. There's third gear low range. Oh, that's beautiful. I guess there's nothing left to do but go for a drive. Guys, I love it. This little thing is a handy little tractor, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, the thing runs excellent. All the gears work. Uh, everything functions to the best of what I can tell. The only thing I don't have right now are headlights and a working ignition, so we don't have the heat cycle, you know. 
all I really need to do to this thing is uh, put an ignition in it and I'll probably just switch to a cat ignition because that's the style that I put into everything around here. That way I have one key that works everything. So I'll probably put a cat ignition switch in this thing. Uh, we're gonna have to check and see if that alternator is charging. I kind of have my doubts it's got a broken tab on the backside so we'll probably end up having to source a new alternator. And uh, then we're gonna have to pressure wash this thing and clean it up and I think I'm gonna surprise the wife with it. I will say this, as nice of a little tractor as this thing is, and uh, it, it's gonna, definitely gonna be handy to have around here, especially with the rototiller and whatnot that goes on the back. If I had to pick one tractor, this thing or the Ventrac, <laughs> it's not even a competition. That Ventrac's got me spoiled. This thing beats you up when you drive it. It's like you're uh, driving a pile of bricks. That thing, man, it's like driving a Cadillac comparatively. Now granted, they're kind of two separate things, obviously, but uh, both serve a purpose. And uh, for what I got into the Mitsubishi, a guy really can't complain. Now, don't tell Eva, but I think I wanna clean this thing up. We'll steam clean it real good. And then I'm gonna put a hot pink paint job on this thing and then like cheetah wrap the hood or something. <laughs> And, uh, and give it to her for her birthday or something. What could go wrong? I mean, she has to love it, right? It's pink and cheetah. Ugh. Make no mistake, my wife does not want a tractor, but she might get one. Drop a comment down below and let me know how you think that one's gonna turn out. But anyways, guys, I guess we better wrap this one up here. It's getting pretty long. If you like the video, I say this every time, but if you like the video, please do me a big favor hit that little button down below the video there, give it that thumbs up, because these videos get hundreds of thousands of views and there'll be very, very small percentage of that will bother to give the thumbs up. I know you guys like the videos because you wouldn't watch them if you didn't. So you can really help me and the channel out if you just take that half a second, click that thumbs up button for me. It would mean a lot to me. Also, if you guys are interested in picking up some merchandise before the holidays get here, you better hurry up. We're getting down to the wire if you want them here by Christmas. We've now got youth t-shirts in the store because I had a lot of people requesting those. We've got uh, beanie hats, hoodies, ball caps, t-shirts, pocket shirts, you name it. We got it over there at the store, dieselcreek.com. Link's down in the description. All that being said, that's all I've got. So as always, thanks for watching. I will see you guys on the next video.